Hello again, everyone. Edwin Leonard back once again. In this YouTube astrological segment, I'm going to be talking about the transit moon making a square in conjunct or opposition to the natal ascendant. Well, anyway, people, first thing, uh, of course, when you have uh, the moon uh, making uh, one of these aspects to uh, the ascendant and transit moon, I should say, making one of these aspects to the ascendant, well, what it is is that the really one of the most important things about this transit is that how you're feeling inside may contradict what you're displaying outside because the ascendant of course is uh, the projection of self your astrological mask or facade and how you look and how you appear to others and when you look at the moon and, and it makes uh, and it makes something where there's a conflict uh, with with that uh, aspect to your ascendant and usually in a different sign when it's making that aspect well you're, you're going to have something you're going to have a conflict with how you feel inwardly often and how you project yourself uh, outwardly I mean let's say that somebody has a Capricorn ascendant and the transit moon and cancer is opposing that Capricorn ascendant well Capricorn ascendant of course the, that that facade the astrological mask I mean that person might appear very cool undemonstrative uh, rather rather unemotional very businesslike but if you have the transit moon making that opposition and say transit moon and cancer opposing the the Capricorn ascendant well that person might be feeling a little bit more hurt or maybe well maybe not hurt but more emotional more sensitive uh, on the inside uh, at that time and those are I mean that's really that's one thing to look at with this transit also the thing about it is if you're somebody that you're if you're unattached say and you have this transit and you're looking for that uh, you're looking for the female a significant other if applicable well it might not be that the best time because you got have to understand the ascendant is about the first impression as well and if the moon is in conflict by by transit aspect to the ascendant well it might not be the best time to be making that first uh, impression on a, on on a woman or it, it really it, to me when you look at this though the, the main thing about this to remember is that this transit uh, transits like this of the moon are, are not lasting uh, that long because you're talking about say for example a square uh, transit square to the ascendant well you figure uh, applying I mean everybody uses different orbs but I use three degrees for applying and then two degrees separating so you're only talking about it lasts for five degrees that's going to be like less than half a day and if you're and a lot of times when this happens people are eat or asleep and it's really not and a lot of times these uh, people can often be oblivious to this, these uh, transits because they go by very quickly but some people can feel uh, some connection especially or they might feel impacted by it especially more if it's in the daytime of course when the people or, or at the time when depending on schedule when the person is awake and they're cognizant you know they're going to be more cognizant of this and feel perhaps feel a stronger effect now it could indicate too. keep in mind that the moon represents the mother as well that the situation with the mother at this time might be a little bit contentious and in, in some cases it could be you know some kind of um, situation where where the, it just not might not be good uh, between yourself and the mother if you're having uh, this transit uh, in some cases I mean you might what it is is it could indicate also that there might be some emotional uh, upsetment that might uh, that might impact the physical body to some degree especially if you have let's say you have the transit um, moon in a uh, in conjunct aspect from your sixth house to your uh, it makes let's say the transit moon makes an in conjunct to your ascendant from your sixth house of health now I mean you could have where you you might feel like some kind of emotional worry I mean the sixth house of course I mean that's the house corresponds with Virgo and astrology I call it look at it like the house of worry if you have the uh transit moon there in, in, in making an in conjunct aspect of the ascendant well there there can be some maybe some emotional worrying and worrying uh and, and might impact your uh 
your vitality to some degree. An ascendant could be connected with one's vitality because, of course, worrying can, can sometimes cause you to stay up more than, than uh, usual to some uh, insomnia or or just a little bit or, or a little sleep deprivation anyway. So, and of course, and when you're deprived of sleep, well, hey, you're not going to have your physical energy. So in that way, it can impact uh, you physically. Now, it could also be, I mean, when you have this aspect, it's harder to often display or convey, express how you're feeling uh, inside. I mean, let's say, I mean, take an, another example. I mean, let's say, uh, uh, I talked about this in a previous video. I had a, a similar example using a Leo Ascendant. Now let's say you're a Leo Ascendant, okay, and the, of course the moon is associated with the public as well, but but anyway, it may not, I mean, you know, Leo Ascendant of course could be very gregarious, very extroverted and outgoing, but let's say you have transit moon in Scorpio making a square to the Leo Ascendant and let's say you're out in some position, you're with the public, or let's say you're going, doing the door-to-door -door sales thing. And the thing about it is you might not be emotionally up to be doing this job as usual. I mean, most people, are, they're still going to do it regardless of transits because most people probably don't, aren't even aware of it. But what I'm saying is because, I mean, you have Scorpio energy. That, that is di much different than Leo energy. Leo, Scorpio energy is much more reserved and secretive. And I mean, let's say if you have the transit, the square um, transit uh, moon in Scorpio in, in, the, in your fourth house, making that square that Leo is sending, there might be more of that mood to be doing something, uh, maybe some kind of transformation uh, in the home or, or just being uh, by being more secretive, being more in private in matters connected uh, with your home and more more introverted. And you have, uh, and then you have the square to the Leo Sun and forget it, you're gonna, it's a, I mean, it's in very, it would be in very strong conflict. So it would put you kind of in a mood maybe where you're not really would be up to doing generally what you, what you would be doing. And when, uh, like I said before, though, the transits, I mean, with this moon and, and aspect, a transiting moon to the ascendant, it's not, they don't last that long. Anyway, you're only talking about five degrees with the three, at least um, the orb I use, three degrees applying, two degrees separating. So, and the thing about it is too, is that if you have, uh, I mean, another thing about this is that, I mean, in some cases it could indicate some despondency or being in a foul mood or, or wallowing sometimes even in self uh, pity uh, during this transit. But the positive side is at least it's not, uh, it does not last uh, very long. And it could be that uh, too, when, when you have this, this is a, a situation where you might have a few more emotional upheavals uh, two than usual. And keep in mind, too, people, as far as contraindicators in terms of transits, I mean, let's say that you have this transit, but you're having difficulty, you know, in emotional expression during this time, which could cause some exasperation, of course. Um, let's say that at the same time, if you're having, say, uh, transit Mercury making a sextile or trying to your natal moon, or you have trend or the transit moon is making a sextile or trying to your natal Mercury. Well, I mean, you, you would have a little better articulating your emotions, at least during this time, even if you have the transit moon uh, making this uh, making this adverse aspect to your natal ascendance. So those are some things uh, to look at. And, and really th this, this thing could be a little emotionally taxing and it can, uh, dissipate the energy of the person a little bit because, as I stated before, the ascendant can be connected with one's uh, vitality. Uh, it is it, the ascendant is the physical body. So anyway, people, that'll conclude this YouTube uh, astrological segment for the transit moon uh, making a square in conjunct or opposition to the natal ascendant. Stay tuned next time where I'll be talking about the transit moon, the transit Mercury making a conjunction to the natal ascendant. Two things I want to get with you on before I head out. Firstly, the stars may impel, but do not compel. And secondly, never isolate any single astrological 
element aspect planetary placement position configuration influence or what have you and make an analysis of a person astrologically speaking based on this alone because astrologically speaking the person is the sum of all their components in their natal chart and not just one until next time people stay well